Doctors, welcome to this integrated session of anatomy and surgery, wherein a small initiative from our side to do a vertical retrograde integration for a common confusing topic regarding urethral injuries, where is the urine getting extra visited in different type of urethral injuries. With me, my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Shilpi Adwal, ma'am, a very warm welcome. Hello, sir. Thanks to you. Hello to all my students. Uh, and myself, Dr. Vineet Gupta. Ma'am is faculty of anatomy and uh, myself faculty of surgery at MIST. Let's take a look at the clinical situation to analyze a retrograde manner of different aspects of urethral traumas, the different types, the causes, the collection in different spaces, the clinical presentation and their management. So my dear friends, if we take a look, a boy fell vertically from a height, he presented to the emergency with suspicion of injury to his urethra. And on clinical examination, there was swelling and bruising in the perineal region and the scrotal region. Now, which part of urethra would have been injured in this boy? And what is the most likely site of urine extravasation in this boy? In the different given options, there is an option of bulbar urethra and the extravasation between perineal membrane and the coelid fascia, membranous urethra between scarpas and coelid fascia, bulbar urethra between superior and inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm, membranous urethra deep to the scarpas fascia in the anterior abdominal wall. Before we move on with the discussion, it is imperative to know the different parts of male urethra. Ma'am, please throw some light on this. Definitely, sir. This is very important. Like when we are approaching a question, the basic thing should be known. So when we talk about the male urethra, according to uh, the latest editions of surgery textbook, Lavan Bailey and Gray's Anatomy, the urethra is divided into the anterior urethra and the posterior urethra. Now, in the anterior urethra, what are the two parts? So when we talk about the anterior urethra, this portion which is present over here is given the term as bulbar urethra, also termed as perineal urethra. And the rest of the portion on the anterior side over here, this is given the term as penile or the spongy urethra. Now coming to the posterior. So posterior will be over here. This is the posterior. Now talking about the posterior, we have one part membranous. Now what is that? This one. This is the membranous portion which is actually surrounded by the urogenital diaphragm which is having the various muscles. Another part is this portion over here, this is the prostatic urethra and we say that this is the portion which is within the prostate gland. Now, the Gray's anatomy, it is also mentioning one more part that is pre-prostatic. Now, if I talk about the pre-prostatic, it will be present over here that is between the bladder and the prostate. So, sir, this is about the parts of the urethra. Please throw some light like what, how the injuries can happen and what will happen next. Yeah, so if we take a look at the different types and different sites of urethral trauma, the commonest reason for urethral trauma is instrumentation. The instrumentation can be either related to a catheter or maybe due to an endoscope, like if we are passing a cystoscope. And if we take a look at the different injuries in the urethra, whether it is the posterior or anterior, it is the anterior urethra which is most often getting injured. And my dear doctors, in the anterior urethra, it is the bulbar urethra which is most often getting ruptured. Now, why this bulbar urethra is getting, getting ruptured? Simply because whenever there is any injury to the perineum, like in case of blow to the perineum due to a fall astride injury or maybe bicycle accidents or loose manual covers or gymnasium accidents, like in this picture, we can see that a person who was walking in the dark and suddenly if his foot falls over this loose manual cover, this loose manual cover can cause direct injury to his perineum. So which part of urethra is going to get injured? Yes, it is the perineal or the bulbar urethra. Right. Now, 
how the urine is going to get collected around this injured site. Ma'am, can you throw some light on this? Thank you, sir. Okay, now this point is actually the point where the students are very much confused. So let us clear that confusion today. No doubt should be left. First of all, before we talk about the extravasation of the urine, let us have some orientation of the perineal region over here. The points which come in our mind is deep perineal pouch, superficial perineal pouch. So let us just see over here. Now this portion over here, which I have put the hand over here, this is the deep perineal pouch and the one which is superficial to it, that is this one. This is the superficial portion. This is known as the superficial perineal pouch. Now, after look, knowing about these locations of the pouches, let us talk about the various fascias. Now, when we talk about this deep perineal pouch, this is the portion where the urogenital diaphragm is present. And if you can see over here, there is a green colored layer which is present inferiorly and a green colored layer which is present superiorly. So, now they are given the term as superior fascia. This one is superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And as we come lower down, this one over here is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. Now, this inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm, it is more commonly known as perineal membrane. This is a perineal membrane. Now, let us come to the superficial side. When we come over here to the superficial perineal pouch, now the fascia which is present over here, this fascia we can look over here, this is the coli's fascia over here. The coli's fascia, you can see it is merging at this point with the perineal membrane. Let us trace it anteriorly. Okay, so let us go anteriorly over here. This is a coli's fascia. And if I go anteriorly, we can see it is going over here. It is going to the scrotum. And over here, it is replaced by a muscle, Dato's muscle. Let us go more anteriorly. Now, as we come over here, it is reaching to the penile region. Over here, it is known as the fascia of the penis or Buck's fascia. And if we go more anteriorly, you can see it is going and merging with this fascia at the anterior abdominal wall. And this fascia is the scarpa's fascia, which is the deep layer of superficial fascia of anterior abdominal wall. Okay, now over here, there is one more space, this one. Now, this space is known as superficial inguinal space. And on the posterior aspect, you can see this muscle which is present is the external oblique aponeurosis. So, let us summarize these spaces and the fascias which are bounding it. Now, this is the key point which you all should know. Superficial perineal pouch, it is between perineal membrane and the coli's fascia. The deep perineal pouch, it is between the perineal membrane and the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And when we talk about this superficial inguinal space, then we say it is between the scarpa's fascia and this external oblique aponeurosis. So this is about all the fascias over here. Now let us talk about this bulbar urethral injury. Now here, uh, such a wonderful explanation for the superficial perineal pouch, deep perineal pouch and the superficial inguinal pouch. That, that's, that's really great. So now regarding the extravasation of the urine, now it becomes very simple to us. If I say that this is the bulbar urethra, okay, this is the position of bulbar urethra. If the rupture occurs, what will happen? The first of all, the urine will go to this area and this is superficial perineal pouch. If the urine extravasation is more, if the bulbar rupture is more, now the urine can also go to the scrotal region. It can go to the penile region and as well as it can go over here to this anterior abdominal wall. So, these are the areas where the urine extravasation will be there. And if a patient comes to us with uh, this bulbar urethral rupture, as ma'am has emphasized here, that the urine is going to get collected in the superficial perineal pouch, scrotum, penis and the anterior abdominal wall. Remember, in the anterior abdominal wall, deep to the scar past fascia. How these uh, fascias can limit the extravasation to other areas? Let's see. Okay, so we have just talked about the areas where the urine is going. Now, what are the areas where the urine will not go? For that, if we see this is the scarpus fascia and at this point, at this point, it is attached to this fascia letter of the thigh on the lower down aspect. And now this aspect, this portion over here is actually given the term as the Holden's line. And this Holden's line where it is present, if we see over here, this is the inguinal ligament. The position of inguinal ligament, this Holden's line is just below and parallel to the inguinal ligament. So, therefore, the urine cannot go towards the thigh due to this attachment. Apart from this, we also mentioned the 
merging or attachment of the coelius fascia with the perineal membrane so the urine cannot go towards the posterior aspect to the ischiorectal fossa how wonderfully explained ma'am uh, that yeah. how the urine is getting collected in the space around the perineal uh, or the bulbar urethra and how it is prevented in going down into the thighs wonderful explanation and uh, let's take a look that how the patient actually is going to present to us in clinical practice my dear doctors if there is any injury to the bulbar urethra if we take a look at this particular area here now if there is injury here the urine is going to leak in this particular area what ma'am has nicely explained signs of inflammation rubber tumor cala dollar so tumor means swelling there would be edema in this area and this edema will not allow the urine to go freely into this area that means the urine is not completely leaking into this area because it is not a big cavity plus because of edema the urine is not coming down so the urine is going to get collected up and this is going to cause retention of urine also my dear doctors we should make a note that in all urethral injuries cases there is blood at the external urethral meatus and since it is a perineal urethral injury so we find a perineal butterfly type of hematoma any urethral trauma patient coming to you in emergency with retention of urine adequate analgesia and antibiotics should be started the patient is discouraged to pass urine because this may widen the injury and for retention of urine my dear doctors emergency situation need to put a percutaneous suprapubic catheter through a puncture using a seldinger technique you can pass the suprakath and this is how the emergency retention is going to be relieved also my dear doctors if the amount of urine which is extra vesicated that is significant then you need to drain that collection like in perineal urethral injuries you have to drain that perineal collection we can do a retrograde urethrography to know the exact site of injury let the injury heal by fibrosis a stricture is going to develop which can be dealt later on either by an internal urethra urethrotomy or maybe a anastomotic urethroplasty this is done typically 8 to 12 weeks later which is a spatulated anastomosis so this is how we can summarize the bulbar urethral injury now at the same time we should also take a look that how this membranous urethra or the posterior urethra can rupture my dear doctors if we take a look at the etiology then since this uh, membranous urethra is lying close to the pelvis so it is associated with pelvic fractures and not only this even the extra peritoneal rupture of bladder is associated with this pelvic fracture the membranous urethra is ruptured as it passes through the bony ring of the pelvis in pelvic fracture and the common causes of pelvic fractures my dear doctors road traffic accidents severe crush injuries and the falls let's take a look that if there is injury to the membranous urethra how the urine is going to extravasate ma'am please so as we have already discussed about the orientations of the fascia now if i talk about this deep perineal pouch it is present over here and this is the location of the urogenital diaphragm the urethra which is present over here is membranous urethra so the rupture will occur over here so now where will be the urine going it will be extravasating to the deep perineal pouch and if the rupture is more the urine can go deep so now over here for the membranous urethra the urine is going deeper and where it is going into this extra peritoneal space and it will surround this prostate gland over here as well as the urinary bladder wonderful great so this is what ma'am has uh, mentioned already that uh, where the urine is uh, getting extravasated now let's take a look that how the patient is going to present to us in membranous urethral injuries also if we try to take a look here now in this particular area if the injury is here then the urine is going to leak in the space already described because of uh, edema here the urine is not going to leak out of freely here as well so this is going to cause retention of urine plus there would be blood at the 
external urethral meatus and my dear doctors the injuries at the apex of the prostate so when we are doing a digital rectal examination in these situations now on digital rectal examination if there is injury here in the membranous urethra the prostate gland is going to be pushed up so we would be finding high lying prostate on digital rectal examination in membranous urethral ruptures there is typically marked bruising of the pubic area scrotum and the penis any patient of suspected urethral trauma coming to us in emergency with retention of urine one word answer my dear doctors to relieve his emergency we are going to do the same percutaneous suprapubic puncture using a seldinger technique we can pass a supra cap out there and once the patient is stabilized we can do the imaging like ascending urethrogram or a retrograde urethrogram where we can actually see the contrast leaking out from the exact site of a rupture and that is how we can identify this leak once this is done then the same principle if there is significant extravasation then we need to drain that collection and here as ma'am has explained us there would be retropubic collection in the extraperitoneal space around the bladder and the prostate and once the urethral injury heals by fibrosis a stricture is going to develop which can be dealt with internal urethrotomy or maybe anastomotic urethroplasty typically 8 to 12 weeks later so this is the broad understanding of the membranous urethral rupture now if we take a look at the clinical situation where the examiner mentioned that a boy has fallen from height and there was injury to the perineal region and the uh, scrotal region the bruising was seen in that particular area so which part would have got injured yes my dear doctors you have got it right it is the bulbar urethra and where would have the urine collected in this case so if the bulbar urethra is there as we have already discussed with them they should look for an option which is having superficial perineal pouch or the scrotum region penile region or, or the anterior abdominal wall or like if the fascias are given like in this question they can correlate with that too wonderful so i hope you would have understood this and uh, we are really thankful for your patient listening we wish you all the very best